Hi everyone, it's Finola Howard and this is Ask Finola How and we are at episode 16. And as always, I always end up saying to you, this is a really interesting one because, and I think they're always really interesting because they're real questions from real entrepreneurs. So let me share with you the question that was posed to me this week that let's have a little discussion on. And <clears throat> here it is, episode 16. I have a problem with the idea of making money. Can you help? And you might think that this is a really unusual question for an entrepreneur, but there's kind of stages that entrepreneurs go through on this journey. And this is definitely one of them, particularly for women. And when I got this question in, I kind of felt, I remembered maybe even 20 years ago, um, looking at this area for entrepreneurs and seeing the difficulty that women have around this idea of money. And so I did a little bit of research before this morning and I kind of wanted to say, I wanted to see if this was still an issue for women. Um, I know this is about entrepreneurs and men and women um, do follow me and I do work with clients from both male and female. This is quite interesting from a female perspective. And about 20 or 25 years ago, I remember doing the research at the time and um, the idea of the relationship that women have with money being a very emotional relationship with money, a very one that's quite connected to their feeling of worth, our feeling of worth, I'm also a woman, remember? Um, and I really looked at this and I'm gonna share you some stories about what I did around at the time. But the thing I wanted to see was, is this still, and actually credit card companies like Halifax and people like that around that time did a lot of research around women's relationship with money. And I just kind of wanted this morning, I did a little search this morning because I wanted to see, is this still actually the case? Has anything moved here? Has anything moved here in Ireland? Has anything moved in the UK or in the US? And I'm sad to say, yeah, it's moved a little, but things have changed. But I want to share some st stats, but not a lot has changed, okay? Not enough has changed. So here's some stats I want to share with you because I think it's really important that you know these, okay? So in 2015, now I have them right up to 2021, Fidelity Bank in the US surveyed 1,542 women with retirement plans and et cetera, right? And they said that eight in 10 women said they avoid financial conversations because they're too personal or uncomfortable, okay? It's interesting, and I bet none of you are surprised. It was also found that women are more likely to talk with their significant other about health issues and sex rather than salary or investment ideas. And there's also this theme of when we teach our children, we often teach women about budgeting and, or sorry, daughters about budgeting and sons about investment. Mm, we've got to change that story. 2019, to bring us more up to date, Jean Chatsky, Financial editor for NBC's Today predicts that women will control 75% of discretionary spending around the world by 2029. 75% of our discretionary spending, okay? The other one is by 2030, 66% of America, America's, 66% of America's wealth will be held by women, okay? In 2020, while we know that surveyed by a US bank while we know that women have more money and power than ever before, so we've got the stats to prove it, the survey results tell us they aren't getting the most out of it. Again, more, September 21, this is last month, okay? While we know, sorry, according to the latest stats, women hold 72 billion in private wealth, but fewer women than men consider themselves to be in good or excellent financial shape. Women are less likely to be investing and are more likely to have debt. Women are still being paid less than men overall. I tell you this not to dishearten you. I tell you this not to dismay you or any of that. I tell you this to empower you to say, we've got to change this narrative. We've really got to change this narrative. It affects our businesses, affects our livelihoods. We live longer than men, come on. We have got to take control of the money. So I applaud this person for asking this question because of the amount of DMs and messages I've got over the last few days, over the last three days, 
really wanting to know more about this. First, there's a little bit of surprise, but also people wanting to know more about the specific question, okay? So let's recap that question. I know I'm kind of bombarding you in my tone today. I think it's because I feel really, this is really important and that we shouldn't shy away from this question. I am grateful for this entrepreneur for sharing this question. And here is the question. And yes, it was a woman who asked this question, okay? I have a problem with the idea of making money. Also notice this is very common in certain specific sectors for women. When we are taught to be in service, to be nurturers, we are nurturers, we do all of this. We are not taught strongly enough about money and our power around money and how to use money in our lives in a very positive way. It's a really positive thing. Okay, anyway, to recap, I have a problem with the idea of making money. I'm happy saying I want to make a living, but not that I want to make money. I'm not confident when stating prices. Discovery calls are difficult. I struggle with pricing. Now we did do a session on pricing and I found that this was important to also address. You can watch back a couple of sessions ago on the pricing one. This is aligned with the pricing one. Some similar issues, but also we get to go a little bit deeper about the whole idea of relationship with money. Okay, so. I also want to share the words of one person who um, I got in the DMs this week. And that person said, yeah, I get that. I suppose I'm getting there with that as I've discovered I have to value my experience and share and charge accordingly. It's taken a year though. So you are not alone, this entrepreneur who asked this first question. This is a question that needed to be aired here. And I value you for that. Okay. And everybody else will too. So... <clears throat> How can we help? <laughs> That's the question, all right? So first we demystify it and we embrace it and we understand that it's a challenge, okay? So it's a challenge that we can overcome. It just takes a little time. It does take some self-reflection. It's really critical for the growth of your business because it's very connected to how you value yourself, what your worth is, and how you actually move forward on the journey. So really, really important. And this, for me always, in all my work, it's about the journey. The journey is not just about the tactics and the strategy. It's also about the journey and the relationship with yourself. Because when you change the relationship with yourself, you change the nature of your business. It's really pivotal, okay? So first tip here, I have several, <laughs> okay, on this. Okay, my first tip is understand your existing relationship with money. And I have a story here for you. So the tip here is do next well i'll tell you the story first so the story is about 20 years ago could even be longer i remember going to there was a um, free course was being run in trinity college in dublin for women it was by an organization called wealth of women and um what they wanted to do was show show women their relationship with money so we walked into the room and this is the exercise i wanted to do so we walked into the room, we sat down, I was on my own, I went on my own. And often, I suppose, when women are tackling financial relationships, they often go on their own. Let's not go alone, you know. So we sat down, we had pens and paper in our hands and um, we were asked to do this exercise. This is my tip for you. And it was to write down free writing, fast, rapid, easy, you know, I can't remember what the other E is for, but it is to, it's to write without a break for 10 minutes, and it is 10 minutes and it takes it out of you. 10 minutes nonstop. You don't take your pen off the paper. You keep going, even if what you're writing is, what the hell is this about? Why do I have to do this? This is stupid, right? On the top of your page, you write this, dear money. So your first thing to help you kind of access what's going on inside is to actually write a letter to money see what comes, do it for 10 minutes, do not stop. What's interesting here is you kind of, because you have this um, instruction to keep writing for those 10 minutes, it makes you go into your subconscious and unlock things. And this will help you understand your existing relationship with money. And that's really important to understand your existing relationship with money. Now my experience on that day was, I was like, start going i don't know what to write here what's this all about okay maybe i'll do this i was writing that maybe i'll do this maybe i'll keep going so i kept going and at the end and it was funny what i uncovered i was surprised what i uncovered about how um 
what my relationship was at the time because you start to humanize. And I think we already have humanized money. Money is not human, guys, but you start to humanize it because he, money often gets blamed. We often get caught in these traps of how we were brought up, cultural relationships, money is the root of all evil. You know, all of those things come up in that. And <clears throat> what moved me really so much in that group environment was that women were crying at the end of this they never knew what they were feeling as a result. And they, it was liberating. So I encourage you, if money is a challenge, and it is for so many women, so many, the stats prove it, start to understand the nature of the relationship. You're not to, don't judge it, just understand it. The second exercise, and I did it in the same event, was, so you take a break, go for a walk, you have to break the cycle. You know, you must break this um, route that happens here. So then you come back and you say, you start again and at the top of a piece of paper, it says, dear, and put your name in. So dear Finola, and that's money writing back to you. Again, it's really powerful exercise to do because you start to free yourself. The first exercise allows you to come to go in and to really understand what's happening and the conditioning that you might have and any kind of assumptions you've made about money. And the second half seems to be a release. So I strongly, no matter where you are, I strongly recommend this as a powerful exercise. It will change the very nature of how you think about money, okay? So try it, I'd really like to know how, how you find it and how you get on with it because it, it's powerful, okay? Now, the next thing is, and this, and that actually, that exercise allows you to reframe your relationship with money and you start to see the changing, be, changing because money, the humanized money writing back to you allows you to reframe and start to see money in a different way. So this is a really good starting point, those two exercises and in that order, really important in that order. The next thing I'd like you to do um, is, or that I recommend that you do is measure what it takes to bring it to the table. OK, so over the years, much of my experience around this around, around this area is in this fear of um, really quantifying and understanding what you charge. This is really look at what does it take to bring this to the table? So how much time does so do you track your time? That's what I'm asking. Track your time on everything that you do around your product or your service that you deliver. Actually do it. It's liberating. I've seen the change too many times for this to be ignored. This is not about you kind of piecemealing what you do every day, but to understand if you price the delivery of your product or the delivery of your service, are you factoring in your time? So it's measuring what it takes to get there. So track your time for a week, track it, see what happens. And you start to really look at, wow, am I even making minimum wage? So many people, when they start the business, they forget they actually don't even charge for their time. They just want to get out there and so they don't charge. So my first thing for you is track your time so you can see it and you look at it head on in the face and go, wow, that's how much time I'm putting in here. And it reframes things again for you. It gives you this shock to see what's involved. Flipping that, the other side of that, measuring what it takes to get there. I want you to start to value what it took to get here. I'm gonna sneeze. Give me a second. No, we're good. <laughs> so if you're a professional, you went to college, you studied, you did a course, you invested. What did that, what, what is the part of the story? What did that cost you? How much time did that take? Factor that in. This is an exercise in understanding your true value, your true worth. So we measure it very fundamentally. It's not how we will price accordingly, but it will be how we start this road of understanding our worth and our value. So we start to believe it. When we start to believe it, we come to the market with certainty. So start with tracking your time and the other side of it. What did it take to get you here? So is it college? Is it courses? Is it time? Is it experience? write it down. You've got to see this in black, black and white. You must see these things when you want to make fundamental shifts. It is always much more powerful to see it in black and white because black and white can't be ignored. Our dialogue in our heads is ignored of 
ignore it consciously, but not subconsciously. We need to take it out of the subconscious and put it in black and white in front of us so we can't hide from it. So powerful, okay? Now, the other thing that I want you to do after this is start to see the value you bring. So it's a bit like, and some of these exercises are really gonna help you in other parts of marketing as well. So this one will help you in your sales pitch and all that kind of, and that kind of stuff. But again, if you can write for 10 minutes and list the value that your service or your product brings to your customer. So how did it help them? So what was the transformation that occurred? Can you write down, well, it helps them get somewhere faster it healed their ankle, it, they're moving faster now, or all of the things, put at least 10 things on that page of what, how, show me the evidence of that, of, well, they have a product now, or now I saved them X amount of money on it that they can use in their business, or list them, or I made their, um, I gave them stuff to do that their children could do at home, and now we have uh, a family that plays together, uses their hands, it's creative, it's changed the whole nature of their relationship with their family, they have fun. They, see, you could just talk and talk about the value you bring to your customer. Do it for 10 minutes, at least 10 things, even if it takes you a minute, like push and push. It will help you see your value and it'll also help you with sales pages and landing pages and all that. So start here. I like to have two purposes for everything I do because I like to optimize my time. So one, you'll help yourself in understanding your true value and your true worth. And also you will help you, it will help your marketing. Really worth doing, okay? Next um, piece of advice. This is a really good one, right? This is a really simple one. If you are selling Anyway, my, my piece of advice for my next tip is make it beautiful. Make your price list beautiful. You know the way if you have reticence around charging for something and you have a price list, take out Canva and create a PDF that makes your price list or how you price it, or if it's even on, on your website, make it beautiful. Uh, like it's something that I learned quite a few many years ago the importance of beauty in what we do, the aesthetics of things. Well, here, the aesthetics or the beauty of doing this will actually help you change how you think about, I want you to be delighted to share your prices. So create something that you're proud of, that's on brand, that looks really good, that's very simple and easy to understand. Doing the exercise makes you want to share your price list makes you want to tell everyone what you're doing. It's the same with business cards. If you pay attention to the things and make them beautiful, you will want to give them as gifts. So even thinking of your price list as a gift, because it's so beautiful, you want to share how much thought you've put into it, how well it looks. That is also a game changer. I've used it with many clients and they notice the difference it makes. Really good tip for you, okay? Doing this, will actually help you be more certain because what I want you to do is be certain, be very clear. When we have this negative relationship with money, we're often hesitant about charging and that was asked by the entrepreneur. But if we do these exercises of bringing certainty, then that certainty will come out. I want my tip for you is be certain about what you're doing because they will buy your certainty. You're certain around what you charge, what you do, what you deliver, what value you offer. And bedding in that certainty is going to change how you talk about money. It is this process. Go through these, I'll share these steps afterwards. Uh, but go through these steps. You will change. I promise you, you will change. Move it one piece at a time and that certainty will come, okay? And then it also will teach you to lead with value because you've written down all the value, the transformation that occurs. When you communicate about price and talk about money and you lead with value, you're believing it and they're believing it. That's why we do this work beforehand, okay? If after that you have an uncertainty, and this is something actually came up with someone else I spoke to yesterday who felt that she had the wrong customer. When your confidence comes, you may find that you have the wrong customer. 
because you may find that you can, as we call it, go up higher up the food chain. You can actually target that customer that you really wanted to before and where price is not the issue. And your value is truly appreciated because first you appreciate it, then you're able to communicate it in a way that creates certainty. And then you teach your customer that to be certain about you too. So you may find that your customer changes as you take this journey in your relationship with money, okay? The other thing I want you to do before we leave this, because it's not just about moving from where you are, I want you to think about con you know, continuing this journey and look at it from an expansiveness perspective. And it's, if I can do more because I have more money, so back to the relationship with money, I can do more for my clients. So we were breaking this kind of, not breaking the cycle of the nurturing woman, but keeping the nurturing woman, but also expanding how the nurturing woman looks at things. So it's, can I, if I have more money, can I do more? Can I serve more? Can I serve better? What value can I bring? Can I make a difference? Can I one, make a difference by reaching more people with my answer, with my solution to their problem, with my answer to their pain? Can I do more? Can I reach more? Can I do more? Can I reach more? Can I do more? That will allow you to expand your perception and maybe your conditioning around what money can do. Changes the nature, reframes the nature of the relationship. And then my last one for you <laughs> today is two books, two really good books for you to look at. One is I'm a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. I recommend this all the time. Fantastic, simple book. And it will take you on this kind of journey, but, will, but not in 10 minutes. You know, it'll help you work through it. And there'll be lots of exercises in that. The other one, and I think you read that one first. And if you're happy to go to the next stage, which moves you from a, um, a limiting perspective around money to a, an abundant perspective around money. And here's the other book. Women with Money by Jean Chatsky. It's one of the ladies that did the research in 2019 and that's changing the relationship with money. So I hope this helped you today. I am Fanola Howard. <laughs> this is How Great Marketing Works and lovely to talk to you. DM me, comments below. Um, happy to answer your questions. Have a great day. Take care.